Ladies and gentlemen, welcome back to Old Robot 7 to the sky. Now you may be asking why on earth I'm staring into the sky, and well, that's because we're in Old Robot 7 to the sky. It, it, we're, we're surrounded by sky. There's not much else to look at. The, the sky. Look at that cloud. Look at that one. Look at that lonely one over there. Oh, look at that one. That's three times the size of that one. But, well, I guess there's one other thing to look at, and that is our brand new base. Yep, I have been busy. Quite busy. In fact, I decided to revamp the entire base. Well, at least how it looks. I haven't touched any of the machines or anything like that. Well, at least not much. I'll get back to that in a moment. But to cover some of the things I did, I installed some oak drawers over here. Well, spruce and oak. These were supposed to be spruce. But anyways, I installed some uh, drawers over here for some of the items that we get a lot of that isn't really any of these uh, ore pieces here. So that's nice. I also discovered that we got these carpenter's table and also mason's table, which are really, really useful in order to make these blocks. Well, the only way to make these blocks, actually. Um, and that helped me, well, make the space look very nice. At least, I think so. Let me know what you think down below in the comments. I also discovered Tinker's Construct as part of the mod pack, so I finally made a crafting station. Now I can leave it and leave items in it without it spilling out. I also went ahead and made some Tinker's tools, which, that yeah, I, I like Tinker's Construct quite a lot. I also revamped the farm area, so now it looks really nice, and it's multi-purpose as well. The water source that uh, gives water to the crops actually has a strainer in it. I also want to install one over here, but I'm saving the iron for today's episode. And finally, we got a dedicated sieving area for manual for manual manual sieving. Wow, words for manual sieving, and then a dedicated tree growing area with some barrels here and there for storing relevant items. Oh, more weed! There we go. Nice. Now, during this, you may have discovered or seen or noticed that some things look a little bit off. Well, two types of offs, anyway. Uh, one off is the off that goes in on or off, and the other off is in, as in, it, that's not supposed to be like that, is it? Well, both are relevant in this case. Uh, both our pulverizers are currently off, and, as in on or off, and we also have the magmatic dynamo, which also is off, as in on or off. But then we also have this, which is off, as in, that's not right at all. And there's a very simple solution, or explanation, I should say, and that is from when I moved the farm. Yeah, I kind of converted the lava into obsidian by mistake. But that's okay, because I want to, in this episode, among other things, I want to revamp this, because currently it is not optimal whatsoever. This could be a lot more compact and also, well, more efficient, and these things really need to switch over so this thing goes first because first we get all pieces and then we turn the all pieces into chunks which we then pulverize and then turn into ingots i think you get my point i want to quickly optimize things get things more compact etc before we move on to the next objective in today's episode so first things first of course a very important nap oh yeah i did something else as well i i, I discovered something actually um and that is this. Uh, I got times one compressed gravel blocks. And that is simply because I didn't realize this, but if you take a hammer, and let's say I take all of this cobblestone and turn it into a stack of compressed blocks, if I place these and break them with the hammer, I get in return compressed gravel, which I can then turn into double gravel, and then I can sieve it. Of course, that's manually sieving, but still, that's a lot faster than what I was doing before. So, had I known this beforehand, I would have gotten a lot more done. So, off camera, I decided to hammer down a bunch of uh, compressed cobblestone into compressed gravel, and I have sieved about half of it, and well, we now have over a stack. <laughs> of iron pieces, which I can go ahead and turn into iron chunks, right, like so, and like so as well. Combine it with the 10 of raw iron that I already have in here, and then I can combine that with my copper ore hammer and turn it all into iron dust. And my ore hammer broke, uh, and I don't have enough copper to, uh, 
Oh, wait, I do have enough copper, I think. Gave it a moment, and boom, I do have enough copper. <laughs> Sweet, so if I just set... Oh, wrong chest. If I just set some of this to smelt over in my own furnace over here, we can get going right away. So first thing I want to revamp is this. I'm not happy with the power setup. It could be a lot more efficient and I'm gonna show you in just a moment. Currently we have been using two fire crucibles, but with my new setup here, we only need one actually, which is going to be really, really cool. So first things first on the agenda is to get all of this stuff torn down, basically. <laughs> all of our hard work from the previous episodes, gone. Well, not, not quite gone, but yeah. Uh, do I have an augmentation in here? Yes. I'm gonna grab that. Just want to make sure that I keep it. All right, now I need to get rid of this accidental, um, well, this accident. And to do that, I think the most efficient thing is going to be making a golden pickaxe because that is really fast. We won't get the obsidian, unfortunately, but I don't have enough diamonds to get a diamond uh, pickaxe. So doing this way is just gonna save a lot more time. Oh, you can see the percentage now, then I'm gonna compare it to using the stone pickaxe in just a moment. Three, two, one, done. Nice, now if I use the stone pickaxe, yeah, that's, uh, no. <laughs> that is not gonna happen on my watch. Where is my, there we go. I got two spruce planks. You know, all of this was calculated down to the letter. I don't know what I'm suing into anymore. Uh, let me break this. And done. Nice. I don't need to go and pick eggs for anything else, at least that I am aware of. Now, previously, we have been using lava to fuel these five crucibles. And if I go in here and press U on the lava and we head on over to the crucible heat sources, you can see here that it says 3x. So this basically determines how hot it is. If we go to a torch and press uh, you on that and we go to crucible heat sources it's times one so the torch is really really bad for a heat source when it comes to crucibles lava is a little bit better than the torch but what we can get that is even better is the superheating element from mechanism because if we go into here that's times 60 this thing is super fast and it doesn't require power and it's actually not that expensive. We need four redstone, four copper, and one steel casing. And for the casing, we just need one osmium ingot and four steel ingot as well. Some glass. Do I have glass? That's a good question. No, I do not. But I have plenty of sand, so we're going to cook some right away so that we are prepared. But yeah, this should be relatively easy. We do have, I think we do have osmium. Yep, raw osmium right there. So if I just go ahead and make another ore hammer... These ore hammers are really not optimal. It is a little bit wasting of our copper, but it will have to do. Um, also gotta go ahead, nope, not crush the magmatic dynamo. That would be horrible. I do need to smelt this as well. So yeah, we, we got a lot of stuff going on here, but we also need steel. And in order to get steel, we need to smelt steel dust. And in order to get steel dust, we can use the whole hammer together with coal and together with iron dust. So if we actually get that right away, get a little bit of coal. So that's four per operation. So I need like maybe 16, I think should do, potentially. Uh, so if we go back to steel, steel, and that, and go in here. Oh yeah, I can only do one at a time because of the hammer. Oof. So if I just do this instead, so that's one, two, three, and four. I think four is all we need. So if I just wait for the glass real quick, there we go. And then we're gonna go ahead and smelt down the steel. And as soon as we have four, we can smelt down the osmium. And while that is done smelting, we can craft the steel casing. So that is our very first steel ingot. And quest completed. Quest completed in mechanism. Ooh, random reward. Okay, let's see what we got. Infuse, to infused alloy. Okay, those will become useful, very useful in the future, actually. That is very nice. All right, so while that is cooked, hold on, there's more thermal series. What do we got in here? Oh, I mean, I, yeah, I got that last episode. <laughs> as well as that. Well, it didn't register. Bounty board. Uh, um. Uh, 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 getting started part two. Yes, yes. Um, mo moving on. Hold on, this thing is kind of nice. 
<laughs> a beautiful golden pedestal for my stone hoe. Yep, that's um, that's that's gonna stay there. <laughs> I'm very happy for the iron sword though, except that I don't really kill any mobs, so I don't have a huge use for it. But uh, osmium, we should have that right there. All right, steel casing. Boom. So that's the steel casing done. And so if we go in here, oh yeah, I need the copper and the redstone, which I have in here. And I do have the redstone in here. And then a superheating element. Boom. Just like that. That wasn't too bad. So with the superheating element, one fire crucible and a bunch of types, I should have those laying around here somewhere. We should now be able to set this up properly. So if I just cut this away, Place a fire heating element and a fired crucible right there. I don't need to actually hold down shift on it, I don't think. And we place an item pipe right there and a cobble gen tier one, just like so. And of course we need to set this to output. And if we hold down shift, you can see that this thing is actually generating very fast. It's going through the cobblestone quite quickly and you'll be able to see that even more in just a moment. So if we put a fluid pipe right there, the magmatic dynamo like so it's gonna as soon as i set this to output yep it's gonna fill up the lava very quickly and i'm gonna put my energy cell right here connect the energy cable right there and i'm gonna put a no i'm not gonna put another one because i think if i attach a chest here it's gonna slow down this a little bit too much unfortunately so i think I think that this is it. I do want to head over here and maybe get, which one should we get? Yeah, this one looks good, I think. As some sort of panel maybe, so place that there. And then place a lever here. This thing should be, yep, redstone has been set to ignore. And then we are now generating power into our energy cell and I can go ahead and connect this up. I can turn this back on as well and we are back in business. These pulverizers use 20 RF a tick each as you can see there and this thing is generating 40 RF uh, per tick so we have exactly enough power to keep those two machines running well endlessly because this thing is full this thing is getting full as we speak it's generating more lava than it is consuming and that is something that i then want to utilize i want to make another magmatic dynamo to place on top uh here right here basically like so to generate 40 rf extra because we're going to be making more machines and the more machines we make and the more machines we upgrade and stuff like that the more power we're going to consume so i would like to have well that that much extra power so we don't sit there and then oops uh we're running out of power so yeah that is going to be the next step right after a quick nap and with that that is one more magmatic dynamo which i can now attach to the system and that is going to get a bunch of lava and this thing should be able to keep up. I hope anyway. So we should see that we are soon starting to gather power in the thing. Maybe is it generating? Is it working? It is outputting power, that's for sure. It might just be because we're running everything right now. Yes, it is actually building up as you can see right here. It is slowly getting to 20,000. This thing will then start doing the same, plus this thing is using power as well. So everything is starting to build up, and then soon we will start having energy again in our energy cell. Very, very lovely. So just like that, we managed to, well, compact this system a lot, but not only that, we also managed to make it more efficient, actually a lot more efficient, just like that. I love this. And I'm going to go ahead and border it in. And this is then, for now in a way, our method of generating power. Awesome. Now the next thing I want to do is I want to improve this station. It shouldn't be too difficult, I don't think. Yeah, I, I want to improve the station and I want to move it over here as well. Hmm, how am I going to do this the best way? I really need to start working on some sort of inventory management system because this is starting to get on my nerves but i think this is what i'm going to do i am gonna put this 
out of business, kind of. No, actually, I just remembered. I noted down to make this, the Augment Factory, um, which basically makes it so these furnaces use power instead of coal, which is cool, um, but also it converts the furnace into a factory, and you'll see what that does in just a moment. I need cobblestone, I need a piston, which shouldn't be too hard to make. I got all the ingredients for that. Boom, piston, and then what else do I need? I need two more redstone, and then I need to paper. Paper, paper, paper. I need sugarcane for that. I should be able to get that from this guy. Maybe. Uh, that's a... Why have you moved? Why have you moved? I don't know. Uh, I need sugarcane. Is that something I have in here? Yes. Perfect. One emerald, just like so. Well, that's unfortunate. I am unable to, <laughs> to, 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 yeah, grow it. Um, I guess I am gonna use three emeralds just because I'm impatient. Yeah, I'm gonna do that. <laughs> that's a little bit painful, but. That is going to be worth it, because now I can just go ahead and make... Oh, I need andesite. I need andesite. Well, that's not an issue either, my friends. And boom. Augment factory. And I should be able to just put that in there. And now this thing is going to be using power. Um, everything is set up as it should be. We got the factory in here. And as you can see, it is now smelting. And the cool thing is... It can smelt multiple items at a time, so if this pulverizer gets a little bit faster, which we will take a look at uh, later, a little bit later on, this thing will be able to uh, smelt multiple multiple time mul multiple things at a time, basically, just like that. Yeah, I'm gonna I'm gonna put this in here actually. I don't know how much power. Oh, it uses a lot of power. Well, it's building up. No start. <laughs> <laughs> we might be using a lot of power right now, but that's fine. Um, but I still want to move this over because I want that to be in front of the station. So I'm going to do something very annoying and I'm going to break this essentially. Move that over. I'm going to go ahead and grab this chest by holding down shift, placing it over here. Hold down shift, place this over here. Hold down shift again and place you over here. That should keep yep, the power and everything. It can keep going. Right, time to move this monstrosity. Um, how? Again, still not quite sure. All right, I think I got this. If I just move this chest over, you will be able to see what I have actually done here. Move this chest over just like so in the floor. The sieve and shift place that. Oh yeah, it still has all my dust in it. That's fine. I still I need a lot of redstone anyway. Um, so yes, this should not be working and it is a lot more compact and uses a lot less power cables as well because we don't need to go all the way over here to the other end of the base. Oh, it does still need to run it though, so we gotta run power over to here and here. Very, very efficient, just like that. So we've got spare cobblestone in here, which I do use for the base and whatnot goes into the pulverizer, which goes into the sieve, which then goes into here. And hopefully we'll be able to upgrade this sieve today to a diamond sieve. That would be huge for us, but for now, that's fine. Um, what I then want to do is put the pulverizer over here, and then basically just place these chests back. Close the input here. As I've got a pulverize, we are gonna have to drag some power over to... Uh, I should have more power cables somewhere. Yes. 18, this should be just fine, place this over, steal this, place that there, steal this, place that there, and we are back in business. All right, a quick thing to note, I didn't have auto input turned to on. As soon as I switched it to on, it actually took the stuff from the pulverizer over. I guess the auto output was disabled as well, so I'll activate both of those. And hopefully that is going to make that a change. But yeah, as you can see, it can now smell both the gold and the lead as well all at once, making this thing quite efficient. That is very, very lovely indeed. And I can also move these. I love that you can move these like entity blocks over. It makes life so much easier that I don't have to break them and replace it and all that stuff. And I just move it from one place off the base to another. 
I love those. This is like moving boxes in real life. Boom. Done. Yeah, not too bad. So this is our new, more compact and more refined, I guess, or refinery. I do, however, still need to manually craft these into actual ore pieces, which does take a little bit of time, but it's not too bad. I can just sit here and do this and I'll be done fairly quickly. Actually, I could do it in my inventory. That might be even faster. Just like so. And when I let have the raw stuff, I can put it in here. It's for the spelting. Very, very cool. Oh, uh, very cool when I can do it properly. <laughs> <laughs> and we are actually keeping peaking, uh, blah, 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 keeping up with power, I think. We haven't started to put power into the energy cell just yet. But to be fair, we are running one, two, three, four machines. So this thing, I can imagine, uses quite a bit of power when we start putting stuff in here as well, just like so. Um, oh, yeah. Yeah, it burns through the power quite quickly. Oh, boy. All right, guys. So I went ahead and actually made another magmatic dynamo here. And this thing is still keeping up we now have three magmatic dynamos generating in total 120 rf per tick and as you can see we are now starting to store power even though all of these machines are running i don't know why there's no sound um uh yeah that, there we go that that's better <laughs> that's better can't play without sounds now can we now, speaking of pulverizers, I have some items here, and I want to make two of these hardened integral components. These are basically upgrades for thermal, the thermal series machines. And if you notice the, the working speed here, and we slap one of these in, it's pretty much double the speed. And it, does, it also enables it to store more power, which is cool. Um, however, it does use more power as well, but it is faster, so this furnace actually gets to do something, because before it would just turn off, turn on, turn off, meaning it was just sitting idle, uh, doing nothing. So this should hopefully make the process, well, faster. And just because I can, I'm gonna upgrade this one as well, allowing us to generate more gravel for this thing to actually sieve through because it this thing is slower than the sieving process and if we go in here yep it's looking pretty decent now i was planning to uh revamp the storage my current storage situation here because currently it is one big hot mess as you can probably tell and i'm not happy about it but i looked into what we need to do and it's that's quite a lot to go through. So we will only just make a start today and then in the next episode we will set up fully a proper storage system, but we can at least start doing it today. Basically, we're going to be using the mod Integrated Dynamics. I was about to say storage there. It can look a little bit complicated, but it's actually not. We need to make a few things here. And again, I don't know how many of these things we're actually going to make, but one thing I do know is that I'm going to need some shears. I'm sure I have some shears somewhere. Unless I broke them doing something. Nope, no shears. Well, I guess I'll just have to make some new ones. Because what we got to do here is get these leaves. Then get, get a sieve, An oak sieve here. And we're going to place that. Uh, we're going to place that right there. And I'm going to upgrade this flint mesh to an iron mesh, because otherwise we won't get the thing that we need. And we are searching... Oh, wow. Yep, that, that's it. That's the thing we're searching for. The mineral sapling. <laughs> that was fast. I was about to say it has a 20% uh, drop chance. So getting it right off the bat, not too bad. I will not complain whatsoever. Now, if we place it and then grow it... There we go. First of all, the wood looks cool. It's it's a blue log. Can't, can't go wrong with that. And, ooh, look at that. Okay, so if we go up here, you may think this is just a log, but it's an enriched mineral log. And if I break that, we go ahead and get some crystallized mineral chunks, which we will get to use in the next episode. But yeah, this tree that drops more saplings, which is awesome, but not only that, it drops these mineral berries, which I think is going to replace 
my current bread as food source because I'll be able to get these a lot easier because I can just grow a tree, chop it down. We got more enriched mineral right here and break the rest of this down. Nope, we still got some enriched right here and here. This is awesome. This will be very useful in the next episode and break these more crystals. Loving it. And this pig, this ax is now broken. But with that, we now have almost half a stack of food. And you eat them fairly quickly. So I will not complain. Now I just need to go ahead and repair my axe real quick. There we go. Pretty seamless and painless. Get the final lock here. And I should have gotten, yep, another subway. So I'm just going to place this. And I think I'm going to chop this tree down as well. And place this sapling here. Just so we can have that growing in the background. Do you have anything to offer? A tomb or a tome of shadows? Um, no, not really. Now the next thing we need to make is some obsidian, which should be fairly seamless as well. Now I don't know if I'll actually be able to place lava in this thing or not. Yeah, no, I thought so. <laughs> that would have been a little bit weird. I need a stone one in order to do that. Which in that case, it is good that we have a very fast golden furnace. And that's that. And boom. We got a stone barrel, which I can then put lava into. And then I just pour water on top. And pick it up quickly. And there we go. We got an obsidian, which again, we will be using that in the next episode as well. And I guess I can go ahead and show you. And these are the items that we need to make or craft in the next episode in order to get our storage up and running. Um, and th for one of these things, yep, this one, we actually need be uh, black dye. And the only really good way of being able to get this at this point in time is going to be through, we should have, yep, bone meal right here, is actually through Botania. Because with Botania, we go to go ahead and make this floral fertilizer right here. And if I grab some dirt from this drainer, this is the strainer is actually really awesome. I go ahead and place on a three by three. I can right click this and we get a bunch of different flowers and they all have colors. So this is magenta, light gray and gray. And I, oh, that is the magical black flower. That actually didn't take too long at all. I got that bone meal this and we get a tall mystical flower. And if I go ahead and re-equip my shears, I can pick up the entire uh, black flower here. I can turn it into petals. I can then place the petal and grow that petal. And I can basically just rinse and repeat just like that. Now I already got what we need because we can then turn these petals right into dye. There we go. Easy. I'm kind of just waiting for this diamond count to go up to six so we can upgrade the iron mesh before the end of this episode. So one final thing I think we're going to make is this, the squeezer. And I just want to show you this real quick, how it works, because it's actually, I find it quite fun and enjoyable to use. So this is a squeezer. We also need the drying basin, which we just made the black dye for, and it's raining. Um, but if we then go ahead and place the drying basin there and the squeezer, what we then use these locks for is if we place this in here and then we basically just jump on this thing, <laughs> which is going to press or squeeze the lock and put the resin into this drying basin right here. And it's going to solidify and we get a block of crystallized mineral, which we can then turn into crystallized mineral chunks just like that. And to reset the squeezer, we can just place a button and press it and just like that. That is that. And yeah, it's pretty good that I showed you this because then I can do this off camera in between episodes because we do need quite a few uh, crystallized mineral chunks as well as blocks. So I'll be making more of these in between episodes here. But I did want to show you this. We got this started. So that is pretty good. That means we can just jump straight into upgrading our storage in the next episode. And there we go. We now have seven diamonds, which means I can go ahead and take six of those, steal the iron mesh, and then I can turn this iron mesh into diamond mesh. There we go. That is a huge upgrade for us. That's going to be epic. That's awesome. I think the next upgrade is the emerald mesh, which we just need, well, two more emeralds for, honestly. 
Um, hmm. Yeah, we just need two more emeralds to in order to get the next uh, to let, get the next match. Then after the emerald match, it match it is the netherite match, which I don't even know how we get netherite in this pack. Um, yeah, I'm 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 not gonna worry about that right now. But guys, with that, I am going to call this an episode. I really hope you have enjoyed. We did some pretty decent progress. We revamped our power generation uh, area over here. We are now generating more and more efficient power from just one fired crucible. We revamped our ore processing uh, area of the base here, more efficient as well now. And then we got started on integrated dynamics, which we will continue to, uh, working with in the next episode to get a digital storage system kind of thing going, which I'm really excited about. But like I said, that's gonna be it for this one. Really hope you have enjoyed. If you did, be sure to leave this video a like. It supports the channel a ton. And if you're brand new, do consider hitting that subscribe button and enabling those notifications so you don't miss another upload. But with that, I'm gonna end it here. Hope you enjoyed and I hope to see you in the next episode. Have a wonderful, wonderful day and goodbye. Yeah.